For today's lesson, our focus standard continues to be grade 8, function standard A, define, evaluate, and compare functions. Our topic comes from mathematical models defining and evaluating functions. Our essential question today is, what is the important characteristics of a function and how do we evaluate one? So please take a moment, make sure that your header is complete, set up your question column and your note column, and let's go ahead and begin. So we want to start to put a little more meaning to this word function that we've been using a lot in this unit on mathematical models. And so there's three characteristics about functions. We know that they're a type of relationship, they can be linear or nonlinear. And here's the third really important characteristic. It must be predictable in order to be considered a function. So what do we mean by it must be predictable? Well, the official definition of a function is that it is a mathematical relationship for which there is exactly one output for each input. That's where the predictability comes in. Every time you put a value in to this function relationship, you should only get one value out. So we're going to take a look today at some functions that you are probably familiar with from last year's geometry unit, and we're going to work on evaluating those functions for particular values. Let's go ahead and begin. So our first example is going to be talking about the area of circles. So <coughs> One thing we can say about circles is that the area of the circle depends on the radius. Again, the radius being the distance from the center point to the edge. Well, another way to say this is that the area of the circle is a function of the radius. So this is part of what makes this a function relationship. Any value we put into a radius into this equation that we should be familiar with, area equals pi r squared, is going to give us exactly one output, exactly one value out. So let's go ahead and practice evaluating this function for a circle that would have a radius of 10 units. So it says here, evaluate the area if the radius is 10 units. So this notation, we are using A for area, R for radius. This is what we refer to as function notation where the dependent variable, right, the area depends on, is this capital letter out here. And the independent variable, radius, is our lowercase variable here in the inside. So this is referred to as function notation. We could have said a equals or even y equals pi x squared, but this is a notation I want you to start to become familiar with. So let's go ahead and evaluate this for a radius of 10 units. Notice I've gone ahead and plugged 10 in for r here in this first parenthesis, knowing that we are going to solve for the value of 10 being for r, and I've substituted it using parentheses here in place of that r as well. So we want to calculate the area of a circle with a radius of 10. So from here on out, we want to follow order of operations and simply solve these calculations. So if we square 10, we know we're going to get 100. And in seventh grade, you may have, may have learned that the precise way of writing this, would, of saying this would be area of a circle with the radius of 10 would be 100 pi. Well, if we wanted to approximate that or use the value 3.14, we could continue our calculations and say, well, 100 times 3.14 showing that we were going to substitute in this approximation value of pi. And that would be 314 square units. So here we use this function, area of a circle as a function of radius, and we've evaluated it for a circle that would have a radius of 10. Let's take a look at one more example. So you may have also learned about the finding the sum of the interior angles of any polygon. And 
what we know about polygons is that the sum of the anterior angles, all these angle measurements added up together, depends on the number of sides for that polygon. Here I happen to have a pentagon, it has five sides. And so another way of saying this is that the sum of the anterior angles is a function of the number of sides. And there's a formula for that. And then we have it here. The sum of the anterior angles represented by the capital S is a function of the number of sides N of the polygon. And the formula is 180 times the quantity N minus 2. So we want to evaluate and find the sum of the anterior angles for a pentagon, a polygon with five sides. So following our example from above, see if you can go ahead and substitute in 5 for the number of sides and evaluate this function. First, we would want to show that we are substituting 5 in for the number of sides, and we would do that with both of these parentheses values here, and then follow order of operations. Since parentheses comes first, we would go ahead and do 5 minus 2, which is 3, and then we would multiply that by 180. Doing so, we would find out that the sum of the anterior angles for a five-sided polygon would be 540 degrees. So, this concludes our lesson today on starting to define and evaluate functions. Please take a moment to make sure that your notes are complete and come ready to work more with functions in class.